Hi everyone. My name is Anna. I work for Aussies Adelaide and I would like to welcome you all for the second day of our Education Summit 2022 by Aussies Group. Uh, the topic of today's session is Community Service Programs, Skills Assessment and Future State Pathways in Australia. We are joined by Mr. Kostya Kuzmin, a registered migration agent from Aussies Adelaide and also a PhD candidate in law in the University of Adelaide. Kostya believes in the importance of achieving the best migration outcomes for his clients. He strategically plans the best pathways options to early in clients, but he's also very excited about taking up difficult cases. Kostya will be replying to your questions in the end of his presentation, so please post them in the chat box and he will answer the questions uh, in the end of this session. Also, we have some very exciting news uh, for our attendees. We want to take the session deep and interactive, so we will encourage uh, questions and feedbacks. We have bumper cash prizes to claim for the ones who leave the most descriptive reviews under this Facebook post. I will share you how the Facebook post looks like. So if you leave the review there, you get a chance to win uh, cash prizes. All you gotta do is to tag your friends and uh, tag Oz Education Summit 2022 in the comment section along with your feedback. Also, the most participative audience members from the chat box will be eligible for free giveaways such as free PT coaching, IELTS coaching, PR consultations and more. That having been saying that, I will get Kostya to start his presentation. Kostya, how are you today? Hi Anna, I'm fine, thank you. Thank you how for joining you? us. I'm good, thanks for asking. Wonderful. I'll just uh, ask everyone to write down their comments in the comment box. And once Kostya finished his presentation, he will go back to you and clarify all your doubts. Thank you very much, Anna. Hello, everyone. Um, I hope this is a good day for you. And um, I hope I will be able to live to your expectations um, in this presentation. I will be also happy to answer any questions that you will have in the end of it. So my main question for this presentation and, um, is why do international students like you guys decide to go into community service programs? That's an important question to ask yourself at any time because when you choose a course, you pay some money for the course. Sometimes it can be significant, sometimes less significant, but you also help to get something in return. What is it that you uh, want to get in return? Uh, perhaps you want to have a rewarding career. Perhaps you want this course to be um, a migration option for you. Uh, perhaps you want the course to have an attractive fee structure. Perhaps community service co courses uh, have all that. Um, and also what we have noticed, they, um, they are a um, nice alternative to students who would not want to go into healthcare, would not want to go into nursing or public health programs, but um, would want to serve the community in a different way, um, would want to have a bit of social work and a bit of psychology and a bit of community work uh, and a bit of helping others. So this, all this you can get in uh, community oriented programs and that's why people choose them. Of course, it's a yes for migration options. It's a yes, but you have to look at the detail. Um, it's very important that whenever we do something, we plan strategically. Um, so when you enroll, you need to answer a question. What is the course going to give me? Is it going to be easy or is it going to be difficult to get a skills assessment? Is it going to be easy or is it going to be difficult to get a job? Is this required at all? What are my options? 
What if I don't get the job after I complete this course? Would I still be able to migrate? Would I still be able to get a skills assessment? So I'm going to clarify all these important things for you today. Uh, how does migration work if you want to do a community service course? A lot of people have not asked themselves this question prior to doing the course and have faced difficulties. Um, you normally uh, face fewer obstacles on your way if you are prepared. So this, um, this presentation I'm delivering today is to help you be prepared and spend your money well rather than be unprepared and spend it badly on something that you don't need or has low prospects. Okay, so I, whenever people come to me, um, I work in Adelaide office, but I'm pretty familiar with migration pathways and programs um, all over Australia to a certain to a certain amount of detail. No one can know everything, but to a certain amount of detail. Um, whenever you want to do skilled migration post study, you need skills assessment. I have clients coming every day um, that are saying. Um, I've been here for five years, so maybe there are concessions, maybe it's possible um, to apply for 491 or 190 because I've been in the state for all my life and whatever. And I say, yes, as long as you have a skills assessment. And they say, well, is there any concession for that? Because I can't get one. And what I say, um, unfortunately not, because skilled migration any visa in skilled migration, the 189, the 190, the 491, is about having a skills assessment. This is the first question you should be thinking about because if you don't have a skills assessment, you can't do expression of interest federal, you can't do state nomination application. Um, this is not going to work without a skills assessment, okay? So skills assessment is number one thing you should be looking after. <clears throat> now, the way skills assessment is done is different depending on what area you're in, okay? So perhaps you heard or you know that it's very easy for accountants, for instance. You just complete a bachelor's degree um, um, uh, or a master's degree in Australia, sufficient accounting and finance content. You go and get assessed. And you, you may not have worked as an accountant any single day. Your GPA might be low but you still can go with skills, get a skills assessment. For engineers, um, it's also pretty basic. You could have graduated with any foreign engineering degree, as long as it's at the level uh, for, of bachelor's degree for professional engineer. And then you write your career episodes, whether based on your study projects or whether based on your work or role that you did or some problem that you solved. And you're done. You're done with your skills assessment. You have a positive skills assessment. Now, <clears throat> that's much, much more complex in community services, much more complex. And you have to take that into account. Skills assessment is normally never that easy as it is in some jobs in community services. So um, in my opinion, this should be. I, I think it's perhaps the biggest, biggest block that you will ever face if you come over it going to be much easier after that. That's the only conundrum, the skills assessment. So uh, on the example of uh, occupation of community work, I take this as an example because most people are doing that. Someone is doing youth work, a welfare worker. Yeah, but community work is a, the basis of this human services, bachelors and other diplomas. Hum, hum, community worker are the ones that we most frequently see. So I will just explain on the basis of it how it works. Um, so the, these three options are um, by studying first option, by studying an aqua accredited course, aqua is that skills assessment authority for community workers. That's the that's what it stands for, the Australian Community Workers Association. And that one does the skills assessment. And if you do a course which is accredited by them, that's much easier than the other options. So accredited course by Aqua. Option two, studying what they call, and I'm using quotation marks because it's their terminology that they're using, studying what they call 
a relevant recognized qualification. Sounds complex. So relevant, something that has relevance, and something that is recognized, not by ICWA, but by someone else. Relevant rel recognized qualification, which is not as good as an accredited course, but still okay. Or there's a third category, simply by studying a relevant diploma or higher. That's it, only three categories. So if you have an irrelevant diploma or higher, that's not going to work for any of the community service jobs. Okay, uh, again, accredited course, relevant recognized uh, qualification, aqua invented terminology, and or third option, relevant diploma or higher. Now that might sound complex. Let's see what each of these mean. Um, what is an accredited course? You can find them on the website. Copy a link for yourself if you want, um, or you can contact us, we'll help you. Um, all the Equa accredited courses, um, it's called Equa accredited diploma or higher course. So I've seen in Tasmania, for example, they've accredited diploma programs. However, in Adelaide, they've accredited only bachelor programs. Only bachelor programs are <clears throat> accredited courses in Australia. You can find them um, using that link. So, for example, just giving you as an example of South Australia, these are bachelor programs of applied social science. Uh, by Torrance um, Health and Community Services by Southern Cross, and then Bachelor of Human Services by Equals, Bachelor of Psychological Science and Bachelor of Social Sciences, Double Degree, Bachelor of Social Science, Aging and Disability, Bachelor of Social Science, Human Services, Bachelor of Social Science, Human Services, and Bachelor of Arts, Double Degree by UniSA. So I this is the list of all programs recognized in South Australia, as you can see, bachelor degree or higher. And some of them, if you can see that they focus on aging and disability, obviously they're better for disability and service or worker. If you see that they focus on human uh, services, obviously it's community worker <clears throat> and stuff like that. So these are uh, degree programs, bachelors or higher, bachelors or higher. Now that's important. SA has bachelors or higher. But as I said, Tasmania may have other options. Tasmania has diplomas accredited. Yeah. So check using that link accredited diploma or higher course. Some states would have only bachelors, some states would have be um, having lower levels, including DIP. Uh, so it's important to know about this pathway. The easiest pathway, in my opinion, the easiest because Equa has said this is the right course. Now, option two. Relevant to recognize qualification, the terminology that they have used the, themselves, is a professionally accredited course recognized by ACWA as being equivalent to ACWA accredited course. Yeah, a bit different, difficult to understand, but they think, okay, so it's our accredited, ACWA accredited, that you can find on our website, is the easiest to get skills assessment in, and then comes something which is accredited by someone else, but we think that it's equivalent to us. Yeah, slight, slightly complex. Um, the following requirements. It must be bachelor or higher. So no, no diploma at this stage accepted. Only bachelor or higher. Has community and ser uh, human services focus. And is professionally accredited by the source country's professional body, which has equivalent accreditation standards to ACWA. Professional accreditation is a process by which it causes validated by a professional body similar to ACWA. So here they would be looking at some professional body somewhere that is similar to ACWA, that is as professional as ACWA, and uh, which has equivalent accreditation standards to ACWA. Now this is pretty, um, this has some sort of vagueness, is it? Like, isn't it? Uh, to me. So, you would never be confident enough that they consider that the course you've done, which is not accredited by them, but recognized by someone equivalent to them, it's getting a bit more complex here, that they would find it equivalent. You know, that ACWA would be satisfied by that authority that your course is rec recognized by, by its standards and whatever. Slightly complex to me, I think 
this is a path that can potentially have certain risks. Certainly uh, not that easy as the previous path, where is the course is directly accredited by Aqua. OK, and now our third category, relevant diploma or higher qualification on the example of community work. That would be a diploma or higher qualification related to community services only, not other disciplines. A relevant qualification that would have a focus on providing community and human services and would have sociology, social, political, economic structures and function. Would have social policy, human development and function, including psychological, physical and social aspects. Would be uh, general and specialized welfare services and systems and would um, target work with individuals, families, groups, and communities. This is what they deem a relevant diploma or higher qualification, the third category. Again, only the first category credited by ARCOA itself. Those, so that's an important thing to remember. Uh, and if it's a third category, um, again, can focus on communication, on counseling, uh, interpersonal uh, skills, might be some additional subjects which could include child development, social justice, child protection, mental health, care management, and others. Uh, in instances where an applicant has used recognition of prior learning to gain credit towards their qualification, ECHO will accept a maximum of 40% RPL, otherwise the qualification will not be recognized. So again, another trick that um, this relevant, oops, yeah, that this qualification in the third category would have to be recognized. And you must not have done the 40%, uh, more than 40% RPL, grabbed it from a different course, yeah? Otherwise, I would again be unhappy. OK, now that's an important thing. Do you need work experience? On the example of community work, but that would apply to pretty each of these occupations. OK. Any experience must be within the four years, must be post qualification. So after you go to a diploma or degree, must be at appropriate skill level. Yeah. So um, you can't be doing a care worker job if you're supposed to be a, doing a caseworker job. Yeah, community worker is a caseworker looking at families, their issues they're facing, psychological, mental, blah, blah, blah. Higher skill level. Yeah, you can't be doing a carer because that's lower skilled level. Yeah, you can't be doing um, a cleaner. You can't be doing um, any other job which is not at the appropriate skill level. But do we uh, need work experience? Do we always need it to get a positive skills assessment um, from Aqua? Well, apparently no, because if it's Aqua accredited qualification, that's the first category, remember? I started with it, an Aqua accredited qualification, the best, the easiest option to get assessed. If we have an Aqua accredited qualification or recognized relevant qualification, applicants who have an Aqua accredited qualification uh, are deemed to have sufficient industry experience through field placement requirements. So as part of an Aqua accredited course, you will have done field placements, OK? Now these, if it's an Aqua accredited course, this is deemed to be sufficient. That's it. That's your work experience done. No need to do work experience separately to get the skills assessment. However, where shortcomings are identified in a practicum component, Aqua may ask an applicant to reapply after completing three months full-time or part-time equivalent industry experience. What does that mean? And it has happened in the past. It's an Aqua accredited qualification. 
or recognized relevant qualification. But even an aqua accredited qualification has been an issue. Um, you've done your placement as part of your course of study. You come to aqua and they tell you, sorry, your placements are substandard. They are not up to the standard that aqua expects. This is not appropriate context in which you have worked. An aged care facility, you seem to have done care duties rather than um, community worker duties. Uh, no, we won't work with that placement. That placement uh, would not be applicable to give you skills assessment. Please do three months full time um, or part time equivalent industry experience. So six months perhaps would be the part time equivalent experience. OK, so generally accredited qualification or recognized rather than qualification would work without experience. However, there have been um, cases where experience was required. Relevant diploma or higher, that's the third category, remember? So if you just have a relevant diploma or higher, then in such case, applicants in this category must have a minimum of one year full-time or part-time equivalent industry experience within the last five, four years. Okay, so you must have that work experience. That's a very, very important difference. This is a huge difference. Um, just completing your course and jumping into skills assessment and having this done, or uh, needing one year of full-time experience. Okay. And why I'm saying this is because it's not very easy to find jobs in the community sector where you would be at the required skilled level. In other words, doing exactly the work that you need to be doing to get a positive skills assessment. So if you just have a relevant diploma or higher, you've done deep, deep in community services, which is not an accredited qualification. For example, you need one year of work experience. Again, the difficulty is it must be at a certain level, must include certain tasks. <clears throat> for example, for community worker, these tasks would include assessing clients' needs and planning, developing and implementing educational training and support programs. I focus on the words planning, developing and implementing programs. It's not care or support work that's important. You are designing stuff. You are the implementer. You are the developer of support programs. You're not a support worker. Other people support them, but you are designing programs for that. Yeah, that puts you onto a much higher level than um, carers and aides are. Interviewing clients and assessing the nature and extent of difficulties. Assessing, assessing. Look, in the first uh, duty, it was assessment. In the second, assessment. Care roles, um, aged care, disability care roles would never involve assessment. This one involves assessment, a strong aspect of assessment because you're skilled enough to do this assessment. Monitoring, reporting on the progress of clients, referring clients to agencies that can provide additional help. So community worker has the power and the independence to make um, decisions uh, which further agencies can be referred, can the client can be referred to. Assessing community need and resources for health, welfare, housing, employment, training, and other facilities and services. Again, assessing community need and resources. You're a planner for the community. You're a planner for many people rather than a carer for some. Liaising with community groups, welfare agencies, government bodies and private businesses about community issues and promoting awareness of community resources, resources and services. Supporting families and providing education and care for children, disabled persons, uh, adult service units, groups, housing and government institutions. Now that's already the focus of welfare worker 
or um, disability services officers. Supervising offenders on probation and parole, potentially community worker or welfare worker, or also youth worker possibly. Assisting young people to social to solve emotional, social and financial problems would be closer to youth worker. Because youth worker, community worker, disability services officer, they're all in this Australian Bureau of Statistics same category, in the same category. So the duties I have shown here <clears throat> would apply to most of them. Preparing submissions for funding and resources and reporting to government bodies and other agencies. Well, look how important this job is. You prepare submissions for funding. You want projects. You first develop projects and then you want them to be funded. And you report to government bodies and agencies. OK, so this job has some seniority. Going back to the question why it sometimes may be difficult to get. Not everyone will get this job, right? You, they would be looking for the best person to fit in this role, for someone who is a very promising candidate who can be given this responsibility. There is a whole lot respons of responsibility in this job. So be careful. If you go into a non-accredited um, course, you must know that you need one year work experience and the work experience would be at this skill level. This is a pretty good job to be doing, okay? potentially challenging uh, for a graduate to get it. Potentially. I wish you all the best, but but remember that there's a challenge, you know, noted, noted that there is a challenge. Uh, you need to have a plan to overcome this challenge. Okay, so that's what I have already elaborated on. Difficult to get employment in this as a fresh graduate, just you need to see the risks, not only the opportunities. You know, as I always keep telling my clients, the opportunities are all there <laughs> because you're in Australia. It's a land of opportunities. Opportunities are in every corner. I agree with that. But you need to know your risks. Yes, you need to know your threats. Otherwise, you know, you might be wearing rose tainted spectacles. And then you realize that you've done something and you can't turn the clock back. And this something has, has been a wrong step. Yeah, so know your threats, know how to manage them. So difficult to get employment for a fresh graduate. Um, potentially confused with lower skill jobs, for example, care worker jobs. That's what I have told you already. I have a lot of people coming to see me and saying, I want to do a skills assessment. I say, great. Have you done an accredited course? No. Um, do you work? And they say, yes, I work as a carer. I was I work as a personal, personal care worker. I was at work as a. Um, support worker. I work as um, as a disability support worker. And I have to unfortunately say, sorry, but the job is not at the required skill level. I can't apply for your skills assessment. OK, so that's a risk. Applicant may end up getting the work experience and ending up with a negative skills assessment. Plan beforehand. You've got a job. You've been offered a job. You want to accept this offer you know that you haven't done an accredited course you know that you will have to do one or two years of work experience for youth work it can be up to two years of work experience community work is only one year work experience meet your migration agent show them the duties show them what you've been offered i've seen people realize after one or two years that they've been doing the wrong job and will not get a skills assessment okay so don't don't let this turn dramatic. Plan ahead. Migration is when it's never too early, never too early. We have people here. I think it's the same situation in other branches. We have people here in Adelaide who come way in advance, way in advance for their skills assessment. They only have come to Australia, only started their bachelor's and they have um, come to speak to us. It's fine. You know, we're happy to do that because we are happy to work on the strategic delivery of your goals. Otherwise, if you end up doing the wrong things, you might end up um, nowhere in several years after having, um, after having paid for your studies. So we are happy to give your advice. We're happy to discuss everything. It's better to talk to us <coughs> earlier than later. OK, so work experience. Just remember. 
non-accredited course. I'm all for accredited courses, as you have seen. I have no interest in selling them, absolutely none. But accredited courses will get you through without work experience. You go for a non-accredited course, be prepared to do a job. If you're prepared to do a job, you need to understand that doing the wrong duties, not at the required skill level, will lead to a refusal in the skills assessment. Look at these acquiesced occupations. Welfare center manager, welfare worker, community worker, disability services officer, family support officer, residential care officer, youth worker. All skill level one or two occupations. Yeah. All highly, highly skilled. That's why they're in, uh, in lists, in occupation lists. These are all highly skilled occupations. They're often confused with nursing support and care worker occupations. Now look at these tasks. These are the tasks of the support and care worker occupations that people so confusingly think are community worker jobs. They're not. Assisting patients with their personal needs, mobility, <clears throat> participating in planning the care. You know, community workers assess the needs of the community and here participating in plan, only participating, only participating, only doing something in the care, following therapy plans, observing and reporting changes their condition, assisting rehabilitation. You know, there's not much assessment, if hardly any. Yeah. These are nursing support care worker occupations. They're not community worker category. They're none of the occupations that I have shown you on the previous slide. This is what community work is confused with. Jobs with these duties would not lead to positive skills assessment. Yeah, that's important. And also agent disabled carers. Jobs within duties would not lead to a positive skills assessment either. Preparing food, accompanying people, assisting clients with mobility problems, arranging social activities, personal hygiene and dressing. Unfortunately not. Also very important jobs for the community. Very important jobs for the community. And we have a shortage of care workers. I understand what you want to tell me, but, but skill migration needs skills assessment. Skills assessment in community courses needs either an accredited course to have been done, or if a relevant diploma or higher, please work experience is a requirement and not with these duties. OK, so again, summarizing this, ECWA assessed occupations are Australian Bureau of Statistics level one or two, one or two, highly skilled. All care and nursing aides, not nurses, but nursing aides and support staff occupations are skill level four, so would not be at the required level. That's important. And again, if it's difficult to get the work experience, how can you mitigate the risk? Do an equi accredited course. The mandatory placements part of that course uh, would help you get a positive skills assessment. Um, I think some people have faced this in the past, so I would like just to briefly talk about that. Uh, can you still have problems with skills assessment, even if you choose an accredited course? Because many of you would understand that because logically, an accredited course and um, would be slightly um, educational counselors know know this better than me. You can talk to educational counselors um, at Aussies. So it would be slightly more expensive, perhaps for because at least in South Australia, it's a bachelor's would be more expensive um, at least because of that. Um, would, can there still be problems? Yes, there can. Unfortunately, ACWA has refused skills assessments in the past, even after completion of accredited courses. We've had a couple of these. Reason, fieldwork placement. Remember, I told you about placements done as part of the course did not meet ACWA requirements. The positions occupied as part of the placement were deemed to be below the required skill level set out by ACWA course accreditation standards. Now, this is painful. I feel sorry so much for the students. I don't know whose blame this uh, is, but there is, I think that it is a huge problem that 
Aquasets accredited courses, and then some of the accredited courses offer placements that seem not to meet Aqua standards. And when you then apply to Aqua, they say, well, yes, the course is an accredited course, but please provide us evidence of placement. And when you provide evidence of placement, they say, well, no, the placement is not up to the standard. I'm not going to say, or obviously I'm not going to say, which educational institution um, has provided these um, educational courses where the placement was not up to the standard. But I will try to reduce your risk of this happening. So what can you do to reduce the risk of this happening? Talk to your education agent and your registered migration agent. Um, ask them about the past graduates of this institution and whether they had any issues with their placements. That's important. <clears throat> Look, this is your career. You're going to spend a lot of money on it. Perhaps you expect to migrate, or most likely you expect to, to migrate with that job. Talk to your education counselor, talk to your registered migration agent. Registered migration agents have made applications for skills assessment. They know whether these placements have been an issue or not. They might be able to recommend you a different option. They might be able to recommend you a university or an, a course provider with which they have had no issues with the placements when they applied to Aqua. Yeah, so we all know that. I'm, just, I'm not going to complain about any of the providers publicly, but I certainly um, would, uh, would look at your particular situation and recommend <clears throat> And tell you about my experience, you know, um, about assessments with Aqua and which course provider I have found more reliable if I had any experience with them. What else you can do? You can write an email to the university and inquire about the placements that they provided uh, in the past. <coughs> Where it was, what setting it was, was it an aged care facility? What did the students do in this placement? Yeah, that's very important tell them um, you have to explain to them that you're choosing this course only because Equa accredited. You've heard that people in other institutions have suffered from improper placements. You will complain if this placement is not up to the standard. Yeah, because this is your life, your investment, your money, your career. Critically important for them to keep up to the standard. Critically important for them to do a good job for you because you're paying for this job to be done, okay? Because if the skills assessment is refused, even if you apply through a migration agent, it, it's refused uh, with a note from Aqua saying, well, your placement is not up to the standard. Um, it's not the migration agent to blame, yeah? Uh, it's your educational institution and Aqua. Do this research, do the research you can see on the slide, do this research prior to enrollment, if you are considering enrollment. Okay. What should you never do? A thing which you should not do. Never provide false or misleading uh, documents or information. Never provide bogus counterfeit documents because it doesn't end very nice. OK. Why I'm saying that? Because I have told in my previous slides. There have been many people. Who got the wrong jobs, yeah, they need work experience to get skills assessment. But they have care or support worker role. And then they say it's not at the required skill level and they try. To embellish it. To make it look better, to make it look nicer. So I've had scenarios, uh, one of these uh, is described. <coughs> Client confirmed they have been working for two years with, as a disability um, services officer, provided work reference, employment contracts, everything with all the duties described. Look, the fact that this presentation or me or any other migration agent you would work with gives you a reference to the Australian Bureau of Statistics duties does not actually mean that you should 
copy and paste them into your reference, even if you never did them. This is just for your understanding which job you have to look for. Yeah. No way, please. Do take these duties and ask your supervisor to sign if you're not doing any of them. Even if you convince the supervisor to sign them, it will still be unlawful. It will still be um, a bogus document because you never did that job. So this client um, did work in the disability sector, but seems to us he worked in a different level, most likely, as I have been discussing in my previous sl slides, working closer to support levels, closer to a more junior role than the disability services officer, skill level two role. Um, yeah, and Equa did their own investigation and was not very happy about that. Of course, we don't... Uh, um, uh, don't name clients whenever I disclose personal details, but the client um, has had a tough going from both Equa, from his employer, because they, um, you know, caused further problems with his employment, um, and and possibly with the Department of Home Affairs. So, the purpose of this slide and the purpose of my advice is. Looking what you are going in the beginning. If it if you need to be employed, look, look at the market, talk to other people. Was it easy for them to get a job at the required skill level? If it was not easy, maybe you should instead consider doing an accredited course. Yeah, because no way should you resort to embellishing your claims making false or misleading statements, providing bogus documents, potentially can cross out all migration prospects for you, including everything in the future. Okay, extremely risky. You're not sure, you're not sure that they will get the job. Uh, you can't get the job now. The last, you, I mean, this, this has never been an option, yeah? Providing anything which is bogus or false or misleading has never been an option in migration in general, and especially where people want to do this, is claim their work experience, which they have never done. People desperately want to do this. My recommendation is never resort to this. Never do this. OK, so what comes up to your skills assessment is ready. State territory nomination for 190 or 491 visa, or uh, and after that invitation to apply, and visa application. So it's pretty straightforward. Life becomes easier after you've done the skills assessment. Yeah, so when you choose states uh, for your um, nomination pathways, first of all, I always recommend to consider the state where you studied first. You know, some of the states would prior, most of the states, in fact, would prioritize their students and penalize the students who left them. Yeah, for example, South Australia does not consider you a graduate anymore if you left to NSW after you graduate. Other conditions would apply to you, but you would not be considered South Australian graduate. For to be South Australian graduate, you must have been um, in South Australia all the time post-graduation. Again, if you graduated from regional NSW, try regional NSW first. Try the phone and one in regional NSW before you move elsewhere. Only if NSW doesn't work, you can consider moving elsewhere. So if you studied there, consider that state first, unless it's absolutely hopeless. You've waited for months, simply no response, you're wasting your time, consider other options. Consider the allocation of places that have been given to the state. Uh, and I'm a big promoter. Um, I'm a big promoter of regional areas. I really am. Um, because look at the allocation. Um, I'm, I've, I've been <clears throat> saying this ever since we saw this allocation. Might seem to you, if you look um, at NSW, that NSW has the biggest allocation. Well, I would say no. Well, I would say no, because um, allocation it's not only about the number of places. It's about how easy it is to get them. OK. So you can have 7,000. The NSW has 190 and 491, 7,640, right? 
But then, how many graduates does it have? How many people does it have that want to avail themselves of the NSW nomination? How many universities does it have? How many students does it have? They will all be applying. OK, so that's important because NSW and Victoria have the biggest number <clears throat> of graduates that will be trying to get through their nomination quotas. OK, and it might be challenging. At the same time, Tasmania and South Australia have been known for lenient requirements, for more lenient requirements than all other states. And SA, for example, look, it has 2,600 190s for this year, 2,600 491s. Okay, if you compare that with NSW, that's 5,200 that SA has in total, and 7,600 whatever that NSW uh, has. But in SA, we have fewer and smaller universities, fewer and uh, migrants, fewer people who are here. A lot fewer people than in SW, potentially less competition. Think about it. Just an example of some nomination options for community workers in South Australia. <laughs> if you, this is for non-SA graduates. Yeah, you've come interstate. You've come from another state. On the example of community worker, you've come from another state. Your 190 eligibility I would be currently working in your nominated or closely related occupation for the last 18 months if Greater Adelaide or 12 months if out to regional South Australia. And your 491 option would be six months anywhere in um, South Australia. Also, uh, we have amazing pro programs available like the Talent and Innovators, but places are very scarce in this one. Just remember this. And out to regional South Australia. Well, it's just a fabulous program. None of the states, I think, has anything like this. So if you have a skills assessment already, it's a nice thing if you have a skills assessment already, come to South Australia, go to our regional South Australia, live and work there for one year. You can be living and working there for one year and you will be nominated for 491 in any job. You have a community worker assessment, you work as a cleaner, 12 months for 491, you can be nominated. If you work as a cleaner 24 months, you can possibly be nominated for 190. Okay. Um, SA graduates, for SA graduates, it's all nice um, uh, and uh, shiny. Um, we can have 190 given after 12 months of work experience in Adelaide or 6 and out to regional 491 after uh, six months anywhere in South Australia. Or if you have the skills assessment already, I'm emphasizing this, for example, skills assessment as a community worker, but uh, you've been uh, working as a support worker, so skill level four, for at least 18 months in Greater Adelaide or 12 months in Outer Regional, you can get the nomination. You need to be working at least 10 hours, 10 hours per week or 20 hours per fortnight, yeah? Uh, and even you could have studied while you were completing your qualification. So South Australia is just so lenient with uh, with these jobs, you know, and with a lot of things in our program, we are very lenient. Uh, we have a special category of high performers, people who are doing extremely well in their studies in South Australia. For this one, you have to be a South Australian graduate only. You can't come from interstate. Uh, Talent and Innovators program, high performing graduate, is a nice program. Uh, everyone who's done uh, five and above GPA can be considered for a 491 nomination. Please um, note that um, you would normally be considered uh, a graduate in this one if you did um, bachelor's at least, right? So not a diploma. You can't do diploma of community services for this one. OK, NSW has also wonderful nominated nomination options for 190. Welfare support workers, even offshore people are encouraged to apply. Um, although the risk, potential risk for everyone would be the experience. I think NSW wants three 
years of experience, if I'm not mistaken. So that's pretty much a very high, high benchmark and um, a difficulty toward the 190 visa. But then um, look at this wonderful option. 491, community worker, for example, I've just taken three occupations for you. You can check, check by yourself further. Community worker is in Arana, Murray, and Far South Coast, all in SW. Welfare centre manager, Far South Coast, Murray, Arana. Welfare worker, Central West, Far South Coast, Hunter, Murray, Northern Inland, Arana, Riverina, Southern Ireland. So many options for 491. So many options. So many um, different regions. And... The streams, there are three streams in uh, 491 NSW. Stream one, I'm licking, living and working in regional NSW. I hold a valid skills assessment. Remember, you need a skills assessment. Have been living and working in your nominated, closely related occupation uh, for a minimum um, 20 hours a week for at least one year. Stream two. Completed study in regional NSW, that's what I told you. Do not consider leaving before you have looked at all the options in that particular state where you studied. So in stream two, uh, you're on the list, you have a valid skills assessment. You have completed study in the past 24 months where you're eligible to claim points for study in regional Australia on the basis of study in regional NSW only and your qualification is assessed as closely related to your nominated occupation by the relevant assessing authority. And stream three, I'm skilled in occupation required in regional NSW. For stream three, you just need to hold a valid skills assessment to an occupation that appears on the list. But, but stream three is a competitive stream. Right, it's a very competitive stream. Look, um, it's time to say thank you. It's time to say say thank you to all of you. I like my viewers. I like our clients. I like the job that I'm doing. Um, my personal details are here. You can see them on the screen. It's always better to use email if you want to get in touch with me rather than calling on the phone number you can call to make a booking the reception will help you to 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 book but if you want to address the matter personally to me so that it doesn't circulate all around the office please use my direct email and i i will be happy to help um, I will now ask Anna if we have any questions that we have to address this afternoon. Anna? Yes, we do. Thank you for your presentation, Kostya. You can stop sharing the screen now. And we have uh, a question from Maninder. That's perfect. He has been here since the beginning of the session. So he's asking, please let, let me know for which occupation I can apply for a skill assessment after completing Diploma of Community Service in an accredited college. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if it's a diploma, in, uh, which is an accredited course, that's, that's the stream one that we have discussed. If it's a stream one and it's accredited, uh, what he can do, he can send that diploma. We'll double check that it's accredited. Um, and then that's community worker occupation most likely. Well, we would like to check on the documents before we provide any migration advice. Yeah, I always say that question and answer session is always tentative responses because we would really want to give advice once we see the documents. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kostya. So Maninder, just get in touch with Kostya by email him your um, documents and he will be able to give you uh, a complete answer. Uh, then we have Sneha as well making a question. She's saying community worker skill assessment done and working as a mental health recovery worker in regional Victoria. What are the chances to get PR? I would want to see what the job involves, but I mm -hmm. would tentatively um, um, say 
that uh, I, I don't remember the, the, I think there were changes to Victorian skilled list. I don't remember if it has popped up there or not. Uh, I tentatively would say that it used to be difficult to go through the Victorian nomination with that occupation. But I would want to have the duties description uh, and what she does in her current role before I give a final reply. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kostya. Uh, we have a question from Sen. He's saying, is it possible to do diploma in community worker even though I have completed my bachelor's in IT overseas? To do a dip in, in community? Uh... Yeah, so he's probably, he's studying, he's keen to study diploma as a community worker uh, and his bachelor was in IT previously in his yeah. home country. Yeah, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he, he can study whatever he wants, but going back to my presentation, category one, accredited course, category two and three, everything else. Yeah. So I, um, you must assess the likelihood of him getting a job. If he feels it's risky, go with stream one, go with an accredited course, then no issue. He can... He can have any background in the past, but if he goes with an accredited course, stream one, that's fine. Uh, but then check in some states, accredited courses are only bachelors, whereas in other states, they are diplomas. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kostya. Uh, Maninder, he's uh, replying to what you have said. He's saying, I have already checked and it's accredited college and my placement is according to ACWA standard. And I was also a student member on the ACWA. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I just my I think that's uh, my um, request to all clients. Uh, I understand that you're doing your own research, but please, uh, you you should also know that uh, we are happy to give advice, but it must be our advice, not yours. So I must see the documents myself. And mm -hmm. I'm confirmed that I'm fine with them because if we deal with the case, then there's a lot of responsibility on us. So I just, um, um, no matter how much I trust people, I cannot be saying, yes, Meninder, I believe it is accredited just because you have checked it. I cannot be doing so, you know, otherwise I would be deregistered from this job, from this uh, <laughs> registered occupation. So I'm happy, happy to help, but um, you need to send through all the documents. And we are, look, I always love giving people responses in writing because it gives me as a professional more time to check and confirm what, what, that what I'm saying is, is the right advice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so Maninder, you got Kostya's email, just get in touch with him. Uh, we have a question from, from Fiona. Are you able to see the chat? Because it's a, a long one. So just on the top, on the there is an icon there to open the chat. I, I'll read out for you. Uh, I have studied bachelor. No, no. That's right. Yeah. In community bachelor's service. Bachelor's in community from service from Victoria. and moved to say so this year. I have positive skills as my community worker. Fantastic. Going to start work as a youth worker. What are my options? Or PR and is my skill assessment as community worker okay? Or do I need for assessment as I can go into start this youth worker? How many points do I need to have? Okay, wonderful. Sorry, you've done, you've dealt with the biggest conundrum. Amazing, you have the skills assessment. Um, so you're starting as a youth worker, fantastic, because South Australia considers it a closely related occupation. You don't need assessment in youth work. Your occupation will be community worker, but you will be uh, doing the job of a youth worker. That's fine because it's closely related. Again, I'm giving tentative advice without ha seeing the documents. If you want, you can send through your contract or um, a reference or whatever so that we could uh, both agree that it's a youth worker job. Yeah, so tentatively, I think no need to do another skills assessment. Community worker category. Uh, with the experience as youth worker, and um, and it was on one of my slides. I think because you're not a SA graduate, um, you can do four nine one. I think tentatively in my memory in six months, or you can do one ninety 
in uh, 18 months, I think. <laughs> Uh, that and 190 in 18 months. That's if you're in Metro Adelaide, or in 12 months if you're in Outer Regional. Now the points. No concern about the points. I understand that a lot of people here are watching us from interstate, and I spend half of my appointments time trying to explain people from interstate that points are not a concern in South Australia because in South Australia we believe in people putting people into jobs. This is our focus. So even if you have what is prescribed as the minimum points, 65, even if you get these, you go through. Mm -hmm. So normally none of the applicants would be too concerned about the points because almost all of you guys would get the 65. So if you're getting below 65, that's where you should start being concerned. If you are at 65, we're not Sydney uh, or Melbourne style migration program where people do all sorts of superior English, Nati, uh, whatever, 90, 100 points and still are not um, selected. And still there you are. I, I know why people fear and ask these questions because they do 90 points, they're still not selected. Does not happen in South Australia. Normally, if you are in the right skilled job, Again, if you would like to share your um, job description or contract, whatever, we'll be happy to discuss. If you're doing the right job, you shouldn't worry about the points. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kostya. Sneha, who has previously mentioned she's working in region of Victoria and she also got her skills assessment done as community worker. She just wrote uh, her job duties are as social worker in region of Victoria. Uh, working since last January, last year. So it's been a year now. Uh, any comments on that? Um, something, um, something, uh, yeah, I understood. Something that, that tentatively sounds like a dissonance to me. Uh, I would want her to drop me an email with that. Uh, and give me some time and I will respond to that in writing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kostya. This was the last question that I can see here in the, in the chat box. I would like to thank you for being here with us today and also everyone who is also watching. Uh, just some final words from my end. Uh, thank you everyone for watching this. I uh, would love to read reviews from you so we will have uh, this event going on other times during the year. So don't forget to leave a review what you like, what would you like to see improved for the next ones. Uh, the link is given on the comment session. Uh, and also I have left in the chat box the links for the next sections that are happen to, happening today. So make sure you join them as well. And thank you so much Kostya for being here. Do you have any final words for the audience? Yes, I think they're a fantastic audience and asking very professional questions. So we'll be happy to see them in the future and hopefully be able to help them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye bye, everyone. Bye.